Mick, tomorrow night, uh, win or bust against Denmark. Are these the kind of games you relish? Absolutely, yeah. Um, big games. I've always thought the, uh, the international games as a player and as a manager were, were bigger than anything else. Certainly in, in my career, I've played in cup finals and won leagues, but the international games have always meant more to me. I won't ask for any hints, but have you made your mind up about tomorrow's starting lineup? Yes. Oh yeah, the lads know I've told them. For most part, most of the team was in my head. How are you in these weeks? Do you wake up in the middle of the night, maybe thinking, have I done the right thing here? Uh, you know, you just asked me there before, and will I sleep? And <laughs> I said, oh, I've got to sleep, but I might wake up, that's the thing. Uh, it, yeah, it does get you. You wake up and thinking about maybe a shape, a system, one of their players, something that, you know, oh, I think about doing that, must say that, must do that. You can only do so much and then I rely on the guys to go out and play and to be fair they've been brilliant. I've, uh, they never uh, never give me anything less than everything. Tomorrow night, the sheer magnitude of the occasion, is that a source of pressure or a source of inspiration for the players? It's a bit of both, I guess. It's pressure, it's whether you're inspired by pressure, whether you're inspired to play well in those big games or do you crumble? I mean, you've seen the side that's played predominantly now, it's been an experienced side and I've been banging on ever since I got the job that eight games to play to try and qualify for European Championships I think requires uh, experience, old heads, players who know the job and nothing's changed in my mind with that uh, and I haven't seen any of them crumble yet, they've all been good. You were brought in with one goal in mind, get Ireland to next summer's Euros. Is that, in your mind, is that the only measure of success? Yeah. Yes, it has to be. Um, I didn't come in thinking of anything else, thinking, oh, I'll come in and you know have a few games and finish third and everybody will think it'll be great. No, it was uh, coming and a, a try to get to the Euros in 2020, and that's by finishing first or second in this group. Well, we can't finish first now, so we have a big game against Denmark and we can still finish. And I, and I would have took that scenario when I took the job. I've told everybody that. Uh, and I think the reality is most other people would as well. Has it been a difficult position for you to be in, given that you have that mandate of Get Ireland to the Euros? But it's been a lot of pressure from the media and the fans for you to give the younger players a chance. Obviously, you're very loyal to the players that have got us. Mm this far. Has it been difficult to try and balance the two, get us to the Euros, but also kind of give the likes of Troy Parrish, Jack Byrne a chance? Not really, because I, I, don't, I don't really listen to too much noise that's going on around football. And if you do, you get, uh, well, I don't get affected by it because I don't listen to it and I wouldn't take a great deal of notice of it. I've, I've, I've been around for a while and, and you know, 970 odd games. I think I've got a little bit of a handle on on, on the job and what I should be doing and wow you know if, if we formed a committee to design a horse we'll get a camel and so uh, it, it's look it's a catch 22 if I, if I play the old experienced lads he's, he's, he's loyal to them and he plays them and if we get wins well that's okay but if I play the young uns everybody thinks it's great but if we got beat they'd be saying no it's they should be playing experience he's only got eight games well I said that at the very start and that's the way I've been and I'm you know, I'm not likely to change on that. You love this job, don't you, Ireland manager? I love being the Ireland manager, yeah, absolutely. Why wouldn't I? And I'm going to make, I'm going to make the most of it until July next year. Every single bit of it. Yeah, that's, that's good. it's going to be tough for you to step back. That's it. That's, that's the gig. That's, I'm cool with that. That's what, I, that's what I took and that's what's happening. Back to tomorrow night then, the next 24 hours. What are you like? Are you wrestling with demons in your, in your head, trying to decide lineups and tactics, things like that? No, the, the, the only way you'd be wrestling with demons over that is if you hadn't done the work prior to that. So we have, in terms of the shape of the team, the tactics of the team, uh, how we want to play, how I expect them, what they'll, they will play, they'll play the same as they did in Denmark, I'm sure. They won't be coming here for a draw. They'll believe that they can beat us, because everybody keeps telling me that. Uh, especially the Danish journalist today. Uh, so the, the demons only come, I think, and the doubts is when you've not done your work. And 
we've not left anything to, to chance that you, th you know, and then we've just got to go out and play. And, and it's, it's just been a gradual, every time I'm talking to people similarly, you know, Denmark, Denmark, it's the Denmark game, you can qualify. Well, let's get it on, let's play it, let's, let's, let's see whether we do qualify tomorrow night.